Hey guys, and welcome back to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to cover the main bus or production bus system. And I'm just going to kind of give an overview of of what it is, its pros and cons, um, some different ways you can do it, what you maybe should or shouldn't put on it, uh, so on and so forth. So we're going to start here. Uh, a main bus is essentially think of it as kind of like like your highway or an artery and then everything else splits off from that so you know if you're thinking of it as a highway uh, of resources essentially then you know you kind of have your quote unquote off ramps if you will um, that split off and then go into other sections and so on from there so there, there's kind of two two main ways um, to do the game in regards to resources you either have a main bus system and I know there's like spaghetti factories but usually those are still kind of a main bus they're just not as organized um, or there's the just completely robot based factory uh, we're gonna in, an, in another video I'll cover the robot based factory but um, today we're gonna go over the main bus and really every factory starts with the main bus I mean you can't just instantly get robots and stuff unless you're cheating so what a main bus does is it allows you to have really a uh, decent organization while sending your resources to everywhere they need to go. So this is an excellent way for newer players or even more advanced players to keep their factory organized. And uh, I'm going to show an example here. I'm in my building big factory. Now I didn't really keep it organized um, the best in some areas, but if you actually uh, want to, it's, it's pretty easy to do so. So you can see we have lanes of different resources. We have some copper and some iron coming down, and you can see that as we go down, there's more stuff added. We now have circuits, and this would be uh, more circuits, but we have circuits and uh, steel as well is coming through here. And then as we go down farther, we have red circuits as well being put onto the bus. And for my particular bus, that's about it. Um, that's just because I'm doing like blue circuits and a robot based system and same with plastic and stuff but you can see kind of how this works we we send it down kind of as a highway and it splits off and goes into our actual little production areas which are off to either side really and and it allows you to pretty easily expand them and just kind of keep things organized you can see that all these are pretty much uh like right up against the path for the most part and it just keeps it nice and organized and uh, allows you to just build off the sides of the bus. So that's kind of what a main bus is, right? As I mentioned, the advantages already, it, it allows you to keep things organized. It, you know, allows you to pretty easily expand off the sides what you need and just split them off as you want. Really the only main disadvantage to it is that it does kind of have a limited throughput uh, the farther down you get, right? because you, you split it off each time. Now this, I'm like splitting a whole lane because circuits just take a lot of copper, but um, even if you use a splitter, and there is a better way to do this splitter thing, but um, you know, if you split it off, you know, you're, regardless of how you do it, you're still pulling some off the bus, right? So the farther down you get, the less resources you have, and the less the things farther down actually get um, resource-wise. So that's kind of the, the main disadvantage to it is that you know the farther down you get the less resources you had to work with and then a late game as well it's just kind of limited throughput I mean you can do all blue belt and you still have pretty high throughput but it still hits a limit so over here I kind of have an example of what something might look like because this one this is just kind of to show you what an in product might look like um, in terms of like the split offs but this is kind of a mess and they they may tend to be in terms of your splits and stuff. I mean, it, it can get quite crazy, but I'm going to show you here in a minute some ways to kind of prevent that and make it a little better. So there, there's you you can do different sizes, right? You could if you're kind of you know a beginner and thinking of just kind of doing a, a starter factory, um, two lanes of iron and copper should be more than sufficient for you. Um, I have four here, but two would work perfectly fine. And and the nice thing is that you can just always upgrade the belts, right? If two yellows does, isn't enough, just upgrade it to red, and then to blue, finally, uh, obviously, to, and you would need the sufficient smelting and stuff at the start to supplement that. But 
Um, that's kind of for a starter factory. If you're planning to build a, a bigger factory, uh, four lanes of iron and copper is usually a pretty standard thing. You can go more, of course, if you'd like. Um, but one thing very important to keep in mind here is you'll notice we have two spaces in between each one of these. And this is very intentional. Um, if you do end up doing more than four lanes of anything, um, make sure that you still set uh, put it in sets of four, right? So say you wanted to do, for whatever reason, six lanes of copper. Um, I would advise not to do it like this. Um, it would be better, if I just get rid of this coal, it would be better to do it like this, right? And the reason for this is so that you can run underground belts across it. Okay, underground belts have a reach of four um, in between the entrance and exit. You can see here, they don't go any farther. So if you're building like five belts in a row, or six, well, any, any more than four belts in a row, right? You're not going to be able to run an underground over it. And what that means you're going to have to do is in underground parts of your actual bus, which kind of uh, keep, like gets the symmetry off if, if you're, you know, visually like me and don't like that. Uh, and, and it can kind of be a pain in some cases make you use more undergrounds than you would have already. So leaving this two space gap in between and only building four lanes wide is very key because this allows you to just run undergrounds completely under it without undergrounding any of, of the bus itself. And, th and that's kind of what I've done here. You can see that, I mean, some areas is bigger, but I've laid out where more belts would go. Um, and it allows me to run belts underneath stuff. Okay, so kind of a typical thing is iron and copper next to each other. Usually you don't have to do it this way. Um, and then circuits and steel you could put next to each other, you couldn't. But these are like the essential things that you would want on your main bus. So in terms of what you actually want on your main bus, um, these are like, I would say, the bare minimum. Um, if you're doing a main bus system is iron, copper, steel, and uh, green circuits. And then later on, probably red circuits as well. So... This is bare minimum and kind of the thought process behind like what you should or should not put on a main bus in terms of like efficiency and, and stuff and throughput is anything that cannot easily be made on site, you should put on a bus. Anything that you can easily make on site, probably don't want to put on a bus. So a few examples, you know, obviously iron and copper. You don't really want to be smelting on site for everything that needs iron and copper, right? That just doesn't really make sense unless you are intentionally building that way. Um, same with gear, uh, same with uh, circuits rather. Circuits, I mean, they're not that hard to make on site, but it's still kind of a pain and some things need a lot of them. So it would it would just make your build really huge, um, like on, on site where you're trying to build whatever needs them. And same with steel, you know, you don't really want steel smelting, like, at a build that requires steel. Um, so that's kind of the thought process there. So then some examples of what you may not want on your main bus is a big one would be, like, a copper cable. Because, well, one, copper cable is extremely easy. You literally just need copper, and that's it. And then you just insert it to wherever, you know, you make the copper cable, insert it to whatever needs it. Um, number two is not many stuff actually needs copper cable. Um, pretty much the primary thing that eats it is your circuits. I mean, yeah, like small power poles eat it and some other stuff, um, red circuits, but not very much. And you will notice that red circuits actually do have them made on site. Um, and that is, that's fine. Um, well, this, this build isn't really a good example, but copper cable can be put on a belt if you're using it at red circuit so you'll see a lot of red circuit builds with copper cable like made at it but belted down the side of it that's fine um but then the third reason is because it's not good for throughput at all and why is this it's because essentially of the resource cost equal to what you're actually getting out of it so copper cable takes a copper plate but produces two cable right so you're essentially getting double the output of what you're inputting and for belting it that's not a good thing right because it's more efficient to transport copper itself than to transport double that if that makes sense right if we make copper cable and transport it we're essentially transporting 
double the amount of copper that we could have just transported to the cable and made it on site, if that makes sense. Um, so gears are kind of controversial. Um, really, personally, I'm okay with bussing gears. You may run into throughput issues because some stuff just takes a ton of gears, like RoboPorts, for example. Um, they take 45 gears a piece. Uh, but gears are actually kind of the opposite of copper cable in the fact that they take two iron and output one gear. So in terms of just setting everything else aside, in terms of just pure resource efficiency transport-wise, it would actually be good to belt gears because you're essentially sending in two iron and getting one thing out. So in terms of belt space and belt throughput, um, you're essentially sending like two iron through for every gear you send on a belt, if that makes sense. I'm not, I'm not sure the best way to explain that, but um, so that one you can just make up your mind. And, you know, things like batteries and plastic, I think, are fine to put on your bus if, if you want to. Uh, if you have another way to get it to where you need it, that's totally fine as well. But, you know, you could uh, you could totally bus batteries and plastic, um, preferably on separate belts. And yeah, this is just the creative mode mod I'm using, by the way, in case anyone wonders. And, I mean, really... That's kind of it. So so the bus is just, it just allows you to keep your factory more organized and easily split things off and, uh, and just upgrade. Now, this is kind of something where it is best to plan for the future if possible because uh, once you have tons of stuff going everywhere, it can be extremely difficult to just add in more lines um, unless you just want to add it to one side. But if it's like, say we wanted more copper, it's a little silly to just add more copper way to the opposite side that you're then going to have to send all the way under it. So it is good to kind of try to plan for the future. I mean, typically four belts of each will last you quite a long time um, once you get fully upgraded to blue belts. And uh, and I mean, really, I think that's it. I, I kind of just wanted to go over some, some different strategies here. Uh, you know, again, you could range this however you wanted. Uh, however, I would advise to keep like iron together and, and for adjacent belts like this same with copper um, any similar resources it's usually best to keep them like right next to each other uh, and then in terms of splitting I mean there's many different ways you could do it you could do priority splitters which I'm not going to go into because I'm not a fan personally uh, but a very simple split which is what you see here is literally just a splitter uh, and you can see that how this would work right this is kind of how this would work and so it's sending 50% of this line off and down. Now, kind of uh, a, maybe a, a little better way to do that would be to put a splitter before and after it just so you're balancing across both lanes. Because if you just do this, um, what happens is, as you might imagine, we're splitting 50% off and you do this over and over again. Um, you end up with one lane with like almost nothing and another lane full, which... It's okay, right? I mean, if you want to just empty the first lane um, until until you can't get any more from it, and then for the stuff further down, you want to use the second lane, that's okay. Uh, but if you want to keep both lanes balanced, then something like this can be good, right? Because we're balancing between two lanes first, and then we're splitting off, and then we're balancing between the two lanes again. Okay, so this is kind of a, a level two, if you will, um, way to do it. And there, there's many different ways to do it. Again, this is kind of just an example. And, you know, you can throw path in. It would actually be advisable. You can see my row ports are, like, really wonky in terms of how I'm fitting them in here. Uh, it would be wise to space things so that you could fit row ports in if you wanted. Um, so maybe in the middle of your bus, perhaps just leave, like, the space for it. So say we had our iron here. Instead of just two spaces here, maybe leave space for RoboPort um, down the middle. So just something like this, and then continue with like your circuits and your steel and stuff. Uh, you can underground under RoboPorts. It actually works quite nicely. It's exactly the link. So you can underground it if you want, if you just want to keep your bus how it, is, how it is, and then just stick them like in the middle of a lane and underground it. That totally works too. But I believe that'll do it, guys. Hopefully this gave you a little better idea of how a main bus or production bus works and You know if you're a newer player, hopefully this will kind of Get you started in terms of, of 
you know, what you might want to do with your resources and how to send them. And I believe that's it. If you have any questions or suggestions or feedback of any kind, do leave them down in the comments. I will check that out. And if you did enjoy, feel free to leave a like, thumbs up. But until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Do hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later.